more of a kind of off the table kind of thing. Um, you know, we we found a little bit of stuff, um, but no. As far as interviewing her mother, it was more of like, you know, we wanted to try to go that route if we could, and we kind of edged it a little bit with Blondie and kind of said, hey, look, what if, if anything, I mean, what can we find out about her? And, you know, she was more to the point where, yeah, I don't really want you guys to do that if that's fine. I mean, you know, and I think if we went behind her back, it was kind of like, it's just, it's like playing the ethics card. You know, it's like, do you really go behind your subject's wishes and, and just go gung-ho and, and figure out, like, and, and ask questions later, or do you kind of respect her wishes? And I think after the relationship we had built up with her for three years, I mean, it was like, you know, if if we went behind her back, I mean, we would lose it all. And, you know, and that would be the end of it. And I, I would I would hate myself in the end for it, but, um, you know, for her it was – you know, we just we we took the high road and just it was like, look, I mean, we're going to respect her wishes. I mean, she's not really coming right out and saying it, but I don't really want to go down that road. I mean, that's just not right. And we got a lot of stuff in the end of the personal stuff we always wanted. I mean, stuff that old that took my breath away when I was filming it, and you know, my wife and I were just kind of sitting there, just kind of watching this person in this particular life i mean doing what she does every day and we actually got to see it you know and so i mean just watching that i mean and kind of watching the footage over again i mean just like i I mean it blows my mind about like how close we got and i just know that any kind of going around and trying to go behind her back would really make me feel like total crap and uh, would go against everything that you know that i've pretty much been taught as far as something like that goes because i mean you do kind of like learn the the hits and misses with trying to do this kind of work and and i think i was told i was like i didn't really think about in the first place i was like you know you're gonna come down to where you have to really make a choice you know it's like do you respect you know that relationship that you built with your subject or do you kind of do it as more of a sensationalism kind of thing and you know for me it was you built that relationship you build that kind of trust don't go behind the back. So. Yeah, I mean, cause, yeah, I mean, you want to be honest about it. Yeah, so, yeah, right, right. Uh, but uh, I do know that you know, because she has been dancing, you know, for so long. I mean, do y'all do y'all get into? I know it kind of hints at it in the trailer, and the the trailer for AK Blondie is really good because I remember uh, we were still working together at the time when I saw the first trailer. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I, there was there was kind of like two trailers. There was one thing that you showed me that really made me crack up, and it was like, just, it, I guess it was an outtake of like Blondie before you started. Yeah, yeah. I think we were trying a few different things at the time, and I think uh, you know I had a producer at the time, and uh, she was trying to do more of a, and we were kind of like putting our heads together, and we tried it. I think it at first and uh, I just wasn't feeling it. I mean because I mean well I mean what people see I mean it's a it's a I mean it's a good story but it is a sad story so I kind of didn't want to do it that way I, I kind of wanted to be able to show I, I know Brantley and I I mean we, we were just like yeah it's like it's it's good I mean it's there I mean it kind of hits you in you know in the in the gut about what this is about but I mean it's so I mean it's got funny moments it's got sad moments but in the end i mean it's a hopeful story but it's just a matter of you know i mean it's it's real i I think it's the kind of main thing so i think we tried a couple outtakes with that but there was like a teaser that was more of like kind of in her head like kind of uh with a bunch of kind of audio things kind of going and then there was more of like an outtake thing and then we settled on the latest one and actually brought in an editor for this and uh got to meet someone that really saw exactly what what we wanted to see and uh you know it was the best decision i ever made on this film uh i mean it was finding this editor and bringing her on and she you know i've been influenced a lot by uh, a filmmaker documentary filmmaker named errol morris who does yeah yeah, he does i mean yeah i mean you know i mean so he does really great character studies of, of people he can really get involved and my editor actually worked with him up in boston so that's how and that's how I got to meet my my editor now is that she worked with him on the film that really 
you know, kind of, I mean, pretty much inspired me to kind of do this way of filmmaking. And she worked with him years ago, and then she eventually came down to Atlanta. She was working for Georgia State. I was looking for interns at the time, and um, the head of her department said, oh, I don't have any interns. He's like, I'll, I'll put out a word, but I do have an editor that's worked on such and such, The Fog of War with Errol Morris, and I was like, sold. Yeah. You know, and then I was like, I had to meet her. I had to kind of do all this stuff. And so when she came on, she saw exactly what we wanted to see. I told her the way I wanted to see it and just but really let her kind of go with it and just see what she could do. And, you know, she she was like, okay, I've got this, this, and this. And for the trailer, and then, I mean, it's it's what it is now. It's just like it's a great, you know, just kind of glimpse, and you, you see so much. And the way she put it together, I mean, it was just we had great music and all this stuff. So, yeah, I'm really glad with with the way we we did the trailer because I thought about trying to edit all this myself, and I learned very quick is that yeah, it's not going to happen, you know, because it was just uh, it was just too much. I mean, it was you're producing a film, you're directing a film, and you're pretty much kind of a one man band on, on on certain kind of things, you know. I mean, you have a lot of help along the way, but on certain levels, I mean, you just you can only do so much, and so I, you know, and I I was told this. I mean, that was like you know you probably want to talk to someone about helping you out with editing. I was like, well, I mean, at first it was kind of hesitant, but, but in the end it was, it was the best decision I ever made. So, but yeah, I, I love the trailer and I hope people get to see that because it was the pacing of the film is a lot like the trailer. So hopefully they'll, you know, they'll like it. Well, yeah, that's what I was kind of uh, wondering about. Cause I know in the, the, the trailer, it kind of, it kind of, cause you, you are kind of telling the story of Blondie, but, I don't know. I don't know if it goes into this. You know how much it goes into this, but uh, I mean, like, is Blondie, like, you know, because like we said at the beginning, she's she's getting older. She's been dancing for like thirty four years. Like, does she have, like, I mean, does she have any plans for the future, or is she like the kind of person that just, like, just kind of living day by day, and you know, just doesn't really have any, you know, plans for when. You know, she can't, you know, maybe, I mean, because if you've ever been to the Claremont, it's not like a big stage. It's like just a little circle in the middle of the bar. And yeah, yeah. There's no pole. There's no nothing like that, yeah. <laughs> pole, there's nothing. I think there's a, uh, like a, like a, uh, like a column. There's like a column, like, uh, like, you know, a structural column, like, near the side of the bar that, you know, they might use every now and then to kind of steady themselves. But, you know, it's only, you know, it's not a very big space. And to be a, you know, you know, 50 to 65-year-old woman dancing on this thing is probably not the safest thing in the world. So, I mean, no, no, yeah. I mean, like, what, I mean... You know, if it gives away too much of the, the actual story of the movie, but, I mean, is there anything you can tell us about, like, what she, you know, plans for her future, if she has any at all? Well, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of the million-dollar question, I think, with everything, is kind of like what she, what is she going to do? And and honestly, I mean, it's not a matter of giving away too much. It's that, we, I mean, we really don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's not like we had anything where we figured out where, oh, she's got this, or she's, She's been prepping for this kind of all. No, I mean she's uh, uh, there are certain things that she talks about uh, in the story where you kind of are like, oh, okay. I mean, but nothing is ever like set in stone. I mean, so it's kind of a you really don't know what she's going to do. I mean, she might stick it out for a little while longer. I mean, you know, she might. Um, I mean, just up and quit. I mean, you know, I mean she's been there for so long. I mean, it's just. You really don't know. I mean, even for us, I mean, we we see glimpses of stuff, but I think in the end it's, um, I mean, if she did up and quit, I mean, what would that do to her? I mean, because it's kind of like, you know, she, she's this character, you know, she's created. It's like, how long is that going to last? Yeah. You know, I mean, if she quits, I mean, is she just going to get bored within like a week? I mean, you know, this has been her whole, I mean, this has been over half of her life. I mean, so what is she really going to do? I mean... But, I mean, she also talks about all these different things that she would love to do if she had the opportunity. I mean, so it's just, uh, but will she be at the Claremont, you know, doing that and then doing all this other stuff? I mean, we just don't know. I mean, you know, she she looks into this film as kind of like her, 
you know, I mean, I, I'm not a very religious person on my end, but, you know, she, I mean, this was her call from God in, in a way. You know, that's the way she's kind of described it to us is that, you know, she's been very, so I think that's why she's she's led us so in so much because she's been, you know, she's been screwed before in the past where, um, you know, she didn't let people in because she just didn't get a good vibe. And then we really, you know, Brantley and I, we really did our homework and we really knew it's like, look, if we really um, are going to do this, we're going to do it right and we're going to be there every day if we have to and, and get it right. And um, and so we did, and we and we eventually, you know, the whole how it all started was that you know through a friend of hers, uh, kind of hinted at her that um, you know we were interested, and so that was kind of the kind of springtime 2009, and then by the by the end of summer, I mean we signed her on uh, to do the film. So um, you know, with all that kind of going, I mean it was just. You know, we really made sure that we weren't going to screw over and we, we wanted to tell this different side. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, she was pretty manipulative in the beginning, I will say. But I think in the end, I mean, she definitely kind of led us into all that. But, um, you know, I really hope she finds what she's looking for. You know, I think um, – I don't really know what that is, though. This might be a, a tad gay, but, you know, when I think about, you know, John and uh, him, you know uh, – you know, of course, we've been friends for a long time. Uh, there is kind of weird moments that, you know, it kind of seems like that I, either you have been, you know, kind of a, uh, a jumping off point for things in my life because, of course, you know, Horror Quest came a little bit out of a conversation I had with you at one point. And then, of course, I was, not only was I there when, uh, you know, kind of the, maybe, you know, kind of the genesis of, you know, AKA Blondie, but, you know, I kind of also uh, got you back in touch with the uh, the woman that became your wife, as it was, you know, so. Yeah, I, I definitely will say that. And it's been, uh, it's been kind of those, you know, everything happens for a reason kind of thing. Like I said, I mean, I, I'm not, you know, much into religion, but I am kind of, I am kind of fond of, like, things happening a certain way, why they do. So, uh, yeah, I mean, because, yeah, you definitely got me back in touch with, with Brantley, who's, who's now my wife and has been for over a year now. And then, uh, yeah, we we got back on the old MySpace because you convinced me to set up an account. This was when yeah. MySpace was popular. Yeah, back when it was popular, but it was like, God, wasn't it like, uh, like 1230 at night or something? And yeah. uh, you're like, hey, just do it. Be like, we got nothing to do, and and so I did. And and then we emailed like within like a couple of hours, and I think I I went and saw her later on, and and all that. And uh, you know, I mean, this was yeah, this was '06. I mean, and so we started dating, you know, that the end of that summer of of 2006. And then I mean, she was up here in the fall, in the fall, and then we yeah, just kind of went from there. Yeah. So ironic is my dad is. My dad is actually now engaged again, and he met his soon-to-be wife um, on Facebook. Oh wow! Okay. So, yeah, so that's kind of so yeah. The apple doesn't fall too far from the social tree, you know. I guess that you'd say, but um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I remember now. There, there, in my memory, there have been two trips uh, that I have went with you to to the Claremont. Was mm-hmm. the the thing with Blondie? Was it the the first one or the second one? Because I remember the first one, like you had two friends that came along, and then the second one was just me, you, and Brantley. Was it the second trip? Uh, the second trip, it was just the three of us, and uh, the first trip I remember because there were people there, and uh, that was when. Uh, oh yeah, 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 I remember that. No, the fur the first one. Yeah, you were there for the there with me for the first time, and that was when there was the cop. The, the stripper cop, and I remember because that was Portia's sister, her younger sister. Portia, yeah, like I said, is the oldest stripper at the Claremont. She had a younger sister who used to work there named Mercedes, and Mercedes gave me a lap dance on my 25th birthday. It was the best lap dance ever to this to this day, And yeah. um, but she okay. gave me the best lap, lap dance, and then, uh, yeah, after that... Um, I mean, that was the start of all that. That was when I first met Blondie. But then the next year, I think we tried to go back, and mm-hmm. it was just the three of us. My my birthday falls around Thanksgiving time, so it's kind of hit or miss whether or not we'll get to 
meet up with any people. Some people are in town, some people aren't. And, um, yeah, the second time, that was kind of the boring time. I mean, we still had fun, I mean, but there, I think we tried to bring a few people and nobody really showed up. So, but, um, oh, I yeah, have, it was so fun. Because like, <laughs> I remember, I, I did, because I do remember you talking to, I, I can't remember if it was Blondie, but I do remember you talking to somebody. And then, of course, you know, like Brantley, I don't, I can't remember if she got mad or what, but, like my <laughs> my favorite thing was, you know, you had gotten a little drunk, and then like, because uh, I'm not a big drinker, so I don't really, you know, I'm I kind of always kind of the designated driver whenever I go out with people. But I'm, <laughs> I just remember having to carry you up because uh, your apartment is up like three flights of steps, like you know this rinkety, you know metal you know, kind of a fire escape thing. And I remember having to carry you up. <laughs> like, you were, you were, you know, just like, ah, oh, Joe, you're such a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was probably my 25th birthday. Because I think by the next year, I was like, okay, this sucks. I was like, nobody's here. I think I was more bummed out that time. But no, that had to have been the 25th. Because we went out to Medieval Times earlier that day. And then uh, the Claremont was was later, but uh, no, it had to have been the twenty fifth. I I'm pretty sure. I can't I can't remember. I can't, I just, I can't remember. Yeah. Getting because we kind of we kind of say we tell the story at the beginning of the, the beginning of the show, but I just remember the uh, what was her name Portia? Is that her name Portia that works Portia. there? Portia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, she she always dresses in the in the very detailed, you know, kind of. I mean, she she has pretty detailed dresses, unlike any of the other girls. I mean, they're. I don't know. If she, I think she actually sews them herself. I mean, which is kind of crazy. But she kind of, she's, she's, uh, you know, for people who've never been there, she is, like John said, she's, I guess, sixty four, sixty five. Looks like, you know, your grand, your grandma. I mean, she's a, a little bit better shape than maybe, you know, some grannies out there. But uh, I, I remember uh, the first time I had went there, and I guess if it was also the first time you had went there, and uh, I just remember. Like, I had no idea what I was in store for. I, I had, of course, heard of the Claremont, but just had no idea. And uh, for some reason, there are certain types of women, and I found that a lot of times it's strippers and uh, women who do porn, uh, for some reason, just enjoy my company. And <laughs> Portia appeared to be one of them, because I remember she, she, you know, she, of course, she looks like a granny, but uh, she... I think she's the only one of them that like really does like like outfit changes. Like every time she goes back on stage, she is somebody else. And a lot of times it's you know like a storybook character. Like because I think it was a lot, like Little Red Riding Hood and like Dorothy from you know The Wizard of Oz. But at one point uh, she had came over, and of course it was your birthday, and she had asked me if I wanted a lap dance. And I said no, but you know it's his birthday, give him a lap dance. So I remember. Uh, her giving you the lap dance, and then uh, right after that, she came over and gave me a hug. And the words that have been uttered many times, like she, <laughs> she said that uh, she goes, "You remind me of my oldest son." And I was like, "Oh my god!" It's like the one thing you don't want to hear a stripper say. Like mm-hmm. she just, you know, like whispered it into my ear. Uh, for anybody who lives in the Atlanta area, to definitely go uh, check out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't really describe the play. I mean, you can describe it. I think like, you know, older strippers, not your average strip club, you know, kind of all this stuff. But it's really one of those places where you really have to go and like walk in the door and look at the stage and like your face says it all, you know, and that's kind of what what that place is like. And, you know, and we it's pretty much become a second home to us. But but yeah, I mean, yeah, with you, Joe, I mean, it was just like, we definitely need to go back. And I think, like, now it's going to be more of just uh, an enjoyable level. I mean, I've always had fun there, but I think now it's going to be more of like, okay, well, now I can kind of just enjoy myself. I'm not really doing research on something or trying to do any of this other stuff, but it's just like it's actually to go and, and have fun and enjoy it. But, I, I mean, we'll still go back and enjoy it that way. I mean, it's it's not like because this film is over where it's going to be like, okay, we're we're done, we're never going back. I mean, you know, I think some people wonder if you're ever going to kind of fall into that trap or are you going to keep the relationships going and kind of all that. I mean, we we have to in this sense. I mean, one, because we love the Claremont, but with Blondie, it's kind of like I don't really see that as being um, 
a problem. Some people are kind of wonder if you get too close to subjects, if maybe that'll affect things. But you know, I, I mean, with, with something like this, I mean, you you get so close to a person, they kind of let you into their life. I mean, you can't really shut them out that way. I, I don't really believe in that. I mean, maybe people agree with me, maybe some will not. But you know, you, you really have to. You know, I, I feel more like crap if I was like, okay, I mean, I'm done. I mean, I'm not really going to talk to you much anymore rather than we just kind of like we don't talk as much about this. We just kind of talk about life and, and you know, and do it that way. So yeah. that, but, um, but yeah, I mean, but, but it's like that with all the other girls at the Claremont. I mean, we've gotten to meet, you know, so many girls at the Claremont that way. And just, um, you know, Portia's one. I mean, Portia, I mean, she, you know, I mean, she's very – I mean, she goes in there and she works, man. But yeah, she changes all of her outfits. But she, I mean, she loves Brantley. God, I mean, you know, she she talks Brantley's ear off for like an hour in the ladies' dressing room when, when she's getting ready. It's pretty funny. Because when I know when Brantley's not back for like 45 minutes when she gets up to go to the bathroom, it's not because she's having stomach problems or anything like that. It's because she's uh, she's talking to Portia. So yeah, but it's but but it's pretty. But a lot of the girls, I mean, we saw girls come and go. 